I'm Wendy Rutledge and this is Palm Beach TV, a production of the Palm Beach Civic Association. Happy Veterans Day and to all the vets out there watching, we thank you for your service. Now let's get to what's next on this week's Island News. November's town council back at the big issues, water quality first and foremost. We'll bring you the town's ongoing efforts to ensure clean drinking water. King tides cover the lake trail again, a reminder that sea level rise is real and hitting the island directly. Hear how the Civic Association's community forum squarely addressed this ongoing challenge. Palm Beach police can now hone their skills in a state-of-the-art facility. Christina shows us the new and improved gun range. And a delicate, precise art in itself, the art of art restoration. These stories and much more coming up next on Palm Beach TV. We're here at the very picturesque Royal Poinciana Chapel, which is the site of the Palm Beach Civic Association's first event of this year, a community forum. And in fact, the first event that we have had in person in at least a year and a half. Now, before we get to that community forum on sea level rise, let's first go to the November Town Council meeting where water quality was once again a key focus. As you know, the town received an advisory alert at the start of the Memorial Day weekend that there was cyanotoxin in our water supply. And uh, the disclosure triggered a number of concerns, including the fact that our home filtration systems don't filter the toxin and boiling doesn't destroy it. It can actually increase the level uh, of toxicity. Town resident Anita Seltzer came to council looking for water safety reassurance. The water remains safe to drink. Um, there's, there's not an issue with it as we stand here today. Potts was hired by the town to be its eyes and ears at a series of expert water panel meetings put on by West Palm Beach to hash out and prevent any future occurrence of the toxic drinking water event of last May. The cyanotoxin that we were working with didn't bloom like regular blue-green algae bloom. We did not get that big mat on top or anything. None of that. There was nothing like, visible. Yeah, so that, that was tough. On a recent tour of the West Palm Beach water treatment facility, we learned that in fact, with no visible sign of toxic algae bloom in the water, it was by sheer coincidence of a spot testing of the water before the planned installation of a new powder activated carbon system that the cyanotoxicity of the water was discovered. We had sampled in early May and they were below the health advisory level. And we were actually starting the pack system up and we were working through troubleshooting it and getting it hit the run as we took that sample and we went into that week. And, and then the results came back. We so we need, we confirmed that those were samples that were high, and then, then we went into the whole thing in May. With a few tweaks to the water treatment system, including the addition of UV light at the end of the process, Potts believes West Palm Water, which is the supplier of the town's water, is safe. The evidence looks pretty good from a technical viewpoint that the treatment plant can be modified to treat C toxins to a level that is below the action level. So good news in the short term, but what about the long term? We've got about seven years left on the agreement. Correct. We, if there's going to be a substantive change that includes infrastructure, we're going to need to know very soon. Brazil, who is guiding town leaders about their options for when the current contract with West Palm Beach for water runs out, says his team has narrowed down future water source options to five, one of which he asked and received permission to spend $100,000 to explore in depth. What we'd like to do is 
go do a much deeper dive on one particular alternative, and that is for the town to be self-sufficient. Brazil will retain experts to study options like reverse osmosis and membrane technology that would allow the town to build and control its own water system toward the end of the decade. And finally, a request by town council to get the word out about the dangers and illegality of kids driving golf carts. This is a safety concern for me. If you have five or six kids in a golf cart being driven by 10, 11, 12 year olds who perhaps don't have the best judgment, um, someone's going to get hurt. And that's my concern. Some kids were doing donuts in a golf cart and it, uh, it flipped over on him and he's, he's bleeding really, really bad. Palm Beach isn't the only community dealing with underage golf cart drivers, but as you can see, the danger is real, not to mention illegal. The law is, that you need to be a licensed driver in the state of Florida to drive a golf cart. Many of you have already heard about the Woods Hole Report. That is the report commissioned by the town council to help the town create a plan to protect the island from flooding, water intrusion, all the effects of sea level rise. Well, that topic was the very focus of this year's community forum. Notice the, the high tides, right? We call them king tides. Uh, you combine the king tides with some pretty good offshore winds and a little bit of wave set up. Not a, not a huge storm. And next thing you know, we have flooding like people don't see all the time. So there's evidence that these things are happening. Bob Hamilton's address to the Palm Beach Civic Association members and guests could not have been better timed. On that very day, Monday, November 8th, the beautiful lake trail running adjacent to the Intracoastal was flooded out in places, a victim of the seasonal king tides. The truth is the sea level is rising. We've been measuring the sea level for 100 years at a bunch of different places. There's no doubt about the fact that the sea level's rising. Um, the rate at which that's going to happen in the future, that's something that's subject of science and debate. But there's no doubt that it's rising and it will continue to rise and we need to plan for that. Hamilton was this year's featured speaker at the Civic Association's Community Forum Welcome Event. President Mary Robison introduced Mayor Danielle Moore to start off the program, who echoed the importance of hardening the island's vulnerabilities to sea level rise. Resiliency is certainly one of those challenges and one of our highest priority as a town. Hamilton, on behalf of Woods Hole Coastal Engineering, acknowledged the town's foresight with its coastal management program started decades ago. Through beach nourishment and dune restoration, Palm Beach is well protected from rising tides on the Atlantic side of the island. The west-facing lagoon side of the island is where the Woods Hole Report says the town needs to focus. Talk about making the seawall higher, but you don't say how high. Bob Hamilton fielded several questions about what individual homeowners can do to fortify their own properties against flooding, explaining that while his engineers have provided the town with data, actual policy changes on seawalls, property elevations, and so on will be addressed by the town council. Meantime, as operating evidence of great planning on that very same Monday, the forward-thinking Tidal Garden, installed by the Garden Club last spring, performed exactly as planned. That is, as the waters rose above the Lake Trail seawall and flooded the low-lying areas of Bradley Park, this remarkable garden directed excess water through its rock filtering beds back to the source a vivid reminder of the power of planning. So really what resilience means in the context of coastal flooding is being able to anticipate what the future risk might be, to be able to plan and implement for it, to monitor and adjust over time, but really put yourself in a position so you can recover. Because bad things are going to happen. There's gonna be flooding events, but if you're prepared to recover from those and you don't lose your absolute critical infrastructure, then you can recover more quickly and keep operating as a town. We assume that our police officers are well-trained in the use of firearms. Well, now we can be even more reassured now that they're getting training in a brand new state-of-the-art facility. Here's Christina. 
Those are the sounds of a newly renovated gun range at the Town of Palm Beach Police Department, funded by the Palm Beach Police and Fire Foundation. We were able to raise somewhere in the range of about 200 plus thousand dollars. Palm Beachers Carrie and Simone Vicker made a gracious donation. In turn, the new and improved gun range has been dedicated and named in their honor. Having you know a community that supports us the way the town of Palm Beach does and the Police and Fire Foundation does is beyond anything any of our peers in the nearby community have. And we're just absolutely fortunate to have that. With the gun out, can you see the red dot in here? I got a little training myself in the new facility, which is easier on the eyes and eardrums, complete with a wireless turning target system, bullet trap to safely capture practice rounds, and strobe lights to imitate an evening traffic stop. It's really a game changer for us. It allows us to get more practice time, more training time with the patrol rifles that the officers carry and use to keep everybody in town safe. That was a good shot. I may be a good shot, but I'm not giving up my day job. For the folks who work here at the police department day in and day out, they are appreciated. And this gift from the Police and Fire Foundation is just one way to say thanks. Our police department is truly right there, training for everything that we do from a national level, even an international level, to everyday uh, issues that come before the department. So. Yeah, we're glad that they're grateful for us, but we're most grateful for them. This is the first renovation that the gun range has had since 1984. That's 37 years ago. For Palm Beach TV, I'm Christina Nicholson reporting. Water, sunlight, time itself can erode a fine piece of art. But Christina has found someone with finely honed skills who can bring that piece of art back to life. This is one of many pieces of art Palm Beach Civic Association director Ed Carter has brought here to Stella Art Conservation over the years. It had aged, oxidized, the canvas had, had begun to show its age, smoke, pollution, and everything else. And I wasn't really that familiar with the restoration of artwork. And I got a great lesson, and they revitalized my painting, and it looks gorgeous. Barbara Stella is one of 22 art conservators fully trained to use nanotechnology in art conservation. This allows her to treat the most sensitive and delicate artwork. There is a lot of science in conservation, and we use chemical, nanotechnology, uh, water solution for cleaning paintings. We use a lot of, there is a lot of chemistry. At an art academy, Stella took a class in conservation and fell in love. Now, she passes along her education to her clients and art collectors when they come into her studio. I love sharing with my clients the stages of the conservations and the, the treatment that we perform. And everything starts from the uh, examination, which we use several tools. We use the UV light, microscope, um, magnify glasses. We go in depth to be able to really identify where is the damage coming from, what was the cause of the damage, and where is leading. So how can we really prevent this painting to deteriorate and bring it back to its original beauty? So there is a lot of process and I like to share this. And according to Ed Carter, this scientific process is a must for any art lover. Looking at restoring, cleaning, preparing uh, artwork for the next 50 years, this piece was about 50 years old, is very important. I didn't understand the technology or how important it is to make sure that you're preserving and protecting what's been put on the canvas. It was put there as an expression of emotion and art was not necessarily thought that it was going to be. No one worried, no artist worries about what is this going to look like 50 years from now. To find out what it would look like and what it would cost to restore your art, you're going to need to come here in person to Stella Art Conservation for a free consultation. For more information, just visit StellaArtConservation.com anytime. For Palm Beach TV, I'm Christina Nicholson reporting. That wraps it up for us. Don't forget to follow us on social media. And we thank you for supporting Palm Beach TV, your only island newscast made possible by the Palm Beach Civic Association and our viewers.